Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The topic under discussion currently is cell signaling mechanisms. The closing slide in the previous session was this, where we referred to cell signaling pathways as those pathways which are triggered by ligands binding to receptors, either membrane receptors or cytoplasmic receptors. And the ligand receptor combination sets in motion these signaling pathways. One set of pathways would involve the ligand membrane receptor combination activating certain kinases within the cell. The kinases would phosphorylate certain proteins and those would bring about responses. We will link this to an earlier slide we've considered in the very first lectures, a, a slide on membrane proteins. It was said that in this session we will be dealing repeatedly with receptors, enzymes and G proteins, the reg of the trexa. The ligand receptor combination would activate kinases which will bring about a response. Of course there are other ways in which the response can be brought about without involving kinases. But when it comes to involving kinases, the ligand receptor combination may activate these kinases directly or the ligand receptor complex would activate a G protein. The G protein would activate a membrane enzyme and the membrane enzyme would activate the kinase within the cytoplasm. The way the enzyme activates the kinase is usually through another signaling molecule called the second messenger. It is this scheme of signaling that we will discuss first and then we will go on to the other mechanisms later. We will now do the rule of four. We are declaring variables. We are saying what all types of these individual molecules there are. We will talk about four types of membrane receptors, four types of G proteins, four membrane enzymes, four second messengers, and four protein kinases. A general rule is that when the ligand receptor combination activates a kinase directly, the kinase is usually a tyrosine kinase. But when it goes through a G protein coupled mechanism, the kinases activated are serine threonine kinases. So we will see four types of serine threonine kinases that are activated by this scheme. Again, this scheme, which is through G proteins, which elaborates second messengers. The set of pathways involving second messengers are referred to as second messenger signaling pathways, which is one subset of cell signaling pathways. Other pathways are also there. We are also aware of ligands binding to cytoplasmic receptors and then producing a response. We will now go on to look at four types of membrane receptors. The four types of membrane receptors could be classified into ionotropic, two sets of catalytic receptors and then what's called a G protein coupled receptor. What is an ionotropic receptor? When a ligand binds to this receptor, there is an ion channel even within that receptor which opens up. 
this type of protein, membrane protein, was referred to as a ligand gated channel in the class on ion channels. We are now using a different term to refer to the same protein. We are going to call it an ionotropic receptor. These are synonyms, ligand gated ion channels and ionotropic receptors are one and the same. The function is this, when a ligand binds to this receptor or ion channel, that ion channel opens up. This is the first type of membrane receptor, which is referred to as an ionotropic receptor. The second one is where the receptor itself is an enzyme and the ligand binding to the receptor activates the enzyme in the receptor. In the third type, the ligand receptor combination activates an enzyme within the cell. And the fourth type is the one we saw earlier, where the ligand receptor combination activates an enzyme on the membrane, a membrane enzyme, through a G protein. And these receptors are called G protein coupled receptors. So while this type of receptor is referred to as an ionotropic receptor, the term that we give these types of receptors where the receptor itself is an enzyme or where the receptor directly activates an enzyme, these are called catalytic receptors. And if the ligand receptor combination activates a membrane enzyme through a G protein, we refer to that type of receptor as a G protein coupled receptor or a GPCR. As against ionotropic receptors, these three are referred to as metabotropic receptors. In addition to these, we know that we have cytoplasmic receptors where when a ligand binds to such a receptor, it induces nuclear transcription, synthesis of new proteins and the newly synthesized proteins bring about the action of the ligand. Our focus in this session is going to be an introduction to G protein coupled receptors. This turns out to be the fourth type of the four types of membrane receptors we refer to. Now we are going to see four types of G proteins. These are GS, GI, GQ and GT. GS for G stimulatory, GI for G inhibitory, GQ and GT. There are others like G11, 12, G13, etc. But their patterns of activity would be like one of these subclasses. So these are the four types that we will discuss in the forthcoming sessions. A G protein is so called because it binds GTP. It is a GTP binding protein and it is a GTPase enzyme in itself. That's a G, G protein. Details of G proteins we will see later. But yes, sticking to the rule of four, there are these four types of G proteins. What about the four membrane enzymes that we are going to consider? We will look at adenylyl cyclase, which is found on the cell membrane, phospholipase C, CGMP phosphodiesterase, and phospholipase A2. We have already seen that the membrane enzyme will activate second messengers, and that will activate serine threonine kinases within the cell, which will bring about the cellular response. Now, we will consider four second messengers, cyclic AMP, inositol triphosphate diacylglycerol combination, calcium, 
and cyclic GMP. These are the four molecules referred to as second messengers. Then we will consider four protein kinases within the cell. These are serine threonine kinases. These are protein kinase A, protein kinase C, calcium calmodulin dependent kinases and protein kinase G. We have now seen that there are four predominant types of G proteins, four membrane enzymes, four second messengers and four protein kinases. We will now see how these individual entities map onto each other. The GS and GI type of G proteins modulate the adenylyl cyclase enzyme in the membrane. GS or G stimulatory will stimulate adenylyl cyclase whereas GI or G inhibitory will inhibit adenylyl cyclase. GQ activates phospholipase C on the membrane and GT activates CGMP phosphodiesterase. Phospholipase A2 is also a membrane enzyme and it seems to be activated by a G protein coupled mechanism as well but the details of the G protein are not very clear at least to me yet. We will now see how these enzymes map on to the second messengers. Adenylyl cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP and increases the concentration of cyclic AMP within the cell. Phospholipase C increases the levels of inositol triphosphate in the cytoplasm and diacylglycerol in the membrane. The final effect will be to increase calcium as well. But calcium is listed as a separate second messenger because there are other ways of increasing cytosolic calcium other than by phospholipase C activation. CGMP phosphodiesterase converts CGMP to 5-GMP which is the inactive form of CGMP. It therefore reduces CGMP levels within the cell. And what do these second messengers do? Cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. IP3 diacylglycerol mechanism activates protein kinase C. Calcium can activate calcium calmodulin dependent kinases and CGMP activates protein kinase G. Therefore, if there is a ligand receptor combination or the best example for a CGMP phosphodiesterase dependent mechanism, we'll see later, is light acting through rods and cones. So light acting on rhodopsin will activate the GT type of G protein, which is why the subscript T comes. It's transducin-like. Transducin is the G protein which couples light binding to rhodopsin to activation of CGMP phosphodiesterase and that reduces the levels of CGMP within the cell which per se can produce an effect other than by depressing protein kinase G activity. To summarize thus far, external signals act on a cell through specific pathways to bring about a response. When we consider chemical signals, we call them ligands. There's a plethora of ligands in the extracellular fluid, but not all ligands act on all cells. A cell responds to a ligand only when it sports a receptor for that ligand. So different cells have different receptors and therefore respond to different repertoires of signals. And different cells have different responses. But it so happens that the signaling pathways which link those receptors to responses, those signaling pathways seem to be the same in all cells. 
it is these finite set of signaling pathways that we are discussing now and we are calling them cell signaling mechanisms. We then focused on ligands binding to membrane receptors. We listed four types of membrane receptors. The fourth one was a G protein coupled receptor. And when we discussed G protein coupled pathways, we've seen the general scheme where the ligand receptor complex activates a G protein which then activates a membrane enzyme which elaborates a second messenger and the second messenger activates a protein kinase. This is the scheme of things to follow. In the next session, we will consider the first three pathways in detail and in the session after that, we will consider CGMP dependent pathways and phospholipase A2. Thank you for watching this NPTEL lecture.